What up, what up, people? It's your man DJ Daz, one in the building. How y'all doing? It is Friday. The weekend is here. The majority of us probably got paid this weekend. If you're one of those people who has a job that gets paid bi-weekly and this ain't that time, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a great time to be alive. Mo D, what up, what up, what up? Salute to one of the greatest DJs in the Boston area. My brother from another mother, DJ Mo D. Man, that's one of my mentors, man. Uh, all around classy guy. And uh, man, Mo D, we, we got to get you on here, Mo D. I would love to break bread with the one and only Mo D, man. Definitely got to get him on here one day. Uh, but welcome to the Rap Sheet Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. This is my second week now doing this. I want to shout out my brother, Rockland Clark, first and foremost, who um, we break bread last couple weeks back. To talk about Black Dollar, talk about fatherhood, talk about uh, community outreach, just talk about a whole lot of damn good things. And um, that's a really solid dude, man. If you don't know who Rockland Clark is, look him up. Um, his his catalog is growing. And he's an all-around good guy. And um, yeah, definitely check him out. And and, and keep, keep watch for Black Dollar, man. Salute to DL. DL, we got to get you on here, man. Um, so whenever you're ready to do that, let's, let's, let, uh, let's make it happen. So today's show, we're going to have the one and only Easy Money, um, formerly known as Ed Rock. That's how far me and this brother go back. Um, without question, um, there's a, there, there are very few MCs independently that I um, can give the thumbs up to strictly off of the work alone. And oof, this brother right here. This, back in my MC days, this was a man that did not want to battle. Because this man was vicious with the bars when it came to battling. Never mind anything else. I mean, he had a, a, a mixtape called 50 More Bodies. I mean, does that, that pretty much sums up the way he attacked battles. So we may get into that, we may not. But this brother right here is doing amazing things. I mean, this man drops album after album after album. He, he even dropped two albums on the same day. In 2019, he dropped two albums on the same day. Easy money, if you are hearing the sound of my voice, man, just let me know you're ready to chime in, and I'll and I'll pull you on in, and we can get this thing started. But um, what I want to do right now, actually, is I want to play um, perhaps one of my favorite Easy Money out on um, Easy Money Records, and um, Lord, Lord, Lord. We're going to definitely get into this because I think this is, um, you know, one of the highlights of any hip hop person's career when you get to work with certain people. And um, we're going to get into this. And wh while we get them in, man, we're, we're going to uh, get this started. So I'm going to play this record right here. It's called Nothing Alike. And then we're going to bring Easy Money in. Let's go. Grammarly is your personal writing Once we get system past for that. clear emails, <laughs> confident messages, stronger essays. Let's go. Show off records. Would proudly like to introduce to you, 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 you. Let's get this crack in perfect time. Let's rock this joint. Oh, uh, ah. Uh. I just had to play the record, brother. I had to play the record. Hey. Wow, man. Ladies and gentlemen. Indy, man, I, I don't even know how to describe you, bro. You you got many hats. Uh, good dad gang in the building. Uh, I, I, I don't think you can see it, but I just want to let you know what hat I'm wearing today. Yeah, I just had to wear it. That's right. Had to do it. Had to do it. Oh, uh, man. Easy. What up, though? What's good, baby? How you doing? I'm blessed, black, and highly favored. First of all, thank you um, for joining me today. I know you have a busy schedule. You re you you just be recording, recording and recording. But uh, I kind of want to take it back to the beginning. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, let me give this man his proper introduction because it only wouldn't be right if I did get my sway introduction like on. Uh, I've known you since 2002. Um, when you in turn did the street thing, that was beautiful. Uh, and I just said it before you came on. I'm like, there was a list of MCs when I was doing my MC thing. I did not want to battle. 
you were one of those people. <laughs> man, you didn't, you didn't want to battle man. me then. Nah, I didn't want to battle you then. Don't want no. to battle you now. Um, never that. Never that. But um, one thing I always admired about you, and I don't think you remember this, but I can't remember who said it. Uh, oh, it was Checkmark that said it about you in term when he said that you all were the next to be the biggest thing out of Boston. I don't know if you remember that. It was at the Middle East, I do believe, when he said I mean, Check, Check was always uh, extremely supportive, always, uh, you know, you, you got you got two kinds of people. You got people that, you know, they hear you and, and, and you know, they believe you're nice, but they feel intimidated, so they keep you at arm's reach. But Check was the complete opposite. Check fucked with us heavy, and he he always, you know, like, would see us. We used to pull up to the shows to see the schizophrenics. Yo, first of all, rest in peace to my man, Eddie Bones. Absolutely. My brother. Um, You know, they would, he would see us, and me in turn would just be there to show love, and he'd be like, yo, y'all ready to rap? And we'd be like, hell yeah. So big shout to Check. Check always showed a lot of love. He was never... It was always love, and he ain't even have to do that. Like, we could have just right. kicked it, but, you know, to go the extra mile and pull us up, you know, to... to showcase us to everybody and you know what the skits the skits had it popping out here yeah you know what i'm saying for, for a good period so i've always appreciated that that was always love they really did i mean i think enter the realm to this day is still one of the most solid projects i ever heard based off the mc bar and the producing tip was a it was a classic so from there you all came out with street now i always forgot what street actually stood for what did street stand for it was speaking through raw epilogue at in term that was it. That this was is before. This is before I went by Easy. Before I even went by Ed Rock. Before all that, I was just like Ed. I was like the kid that didn't really want to rap, but I was just <laughs> rapping because Term used to drag me to the studio with him. Right. And then uh, you know now you know you know as we grew, it became speaking through real experience every time. Shout out to my man Hector. Hector came up with that. Okay. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just now tuning in, like I said, we got my man Easy Money in the building, man. We just going through the history of who he is from back then to right now. So what was it um, when you first got into the game? What was your overall plan um, to be an independent artist, not only coming out of Massachusetts, but coming out of the East Coast? What was your um, original plan when you first got into this? Where did you see yourself in 10 years? Let's just start there. I, I, I always, My thing was this. My thing was... Um, I was always capable, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I never I never had an issue knowing how to rap. I felt like it always came natural. But, you know, seeing, like, Term's passion was inspiring. I never I never thought, like, being, like, this big star was attainable, but with time, I just appreciated being able to contribute. Right. And that still, that still holds very true now. Like, I love hip-hop culture. I am hip-hop culture. And just to be able to contribute to that, you know, this just a small, the small group of supporters that I do have is appreciated, and it's a blessing because you know, like, don't nobody owe you shit. You don't got, right. you don't gotta have one fan. You know what I mean? So if you got, a, if you got a few, you treat them right and you hold on to them. Like that's always been my thing. Um, exactly. as far as like where I would be in ten years, I mean, I mean, there, there, there's things, there's things that's like you thought you that weren't attainable. I remember being Term and I being in his basement, mm. and um. You know, he he's always been a vinyl guy, and we would listen to all, you know, every B-side then was DJ Premier. And we used to be like, oh, my God, this guy's the best, like, just knowing we would never work with him. And then fast forward, we worked with him, you know? So that was, yeah. that's enormous in itself, you know? So a lot of a lot of things that uh, sometimes I got to remember, you know, I got to give myself a little more credit, you know what I'm saying? I think you definitely do. Um, and I've said this to you many times, I think that lyrics today still mean everything and i'm glad that we were born in a time frame where we had people like tribe and daylight and mob deep and nas and gangstar and the roots and so many other great people who actually put time and thought into what they said and wrote and put out to the people where and i'm not trying to knock anyone who loves today's hip-hop but we come from a time and era where um and i think talib Kweli said it. he's like it's the dawn of the era of the mc who thinks before he spits and that reminds mm -hmm. me of you so i wanted to give you your flowers on that um, I appreciate you, definitely, definitely. Uh, shout out my man Chi Knox. My man Chi Knox. When you talk about the history, shout out my man Chi Knox. Yeah. Him and I, we go way back. Okay. And I was actually going to segue into that. ST the Squad. Um, yes, sir. Yes, wow. Sir. Artisan, uh, Snuck, Term, DJ Deadeye. How did you all get together? And when? what was y'all's goal as a group? Because there's not too many posses or, or, or groups that really 
stay the course. Some fall off and then they come back. But you all mm-hmm. managed to always stay together and never departed, even if you did stuff outside of the crew. What was how did SC the squad get together though? Mm. So you know it the the it stems from street obviously you know when when we expanded obviously you know street abbreviated as st so i just thought it would be a good idea to do that st the squad but you know it all started with term and i you know what i'm saying obviously being childhood childhood friends and then you know uh recording together mm-hmm. and, you know since snuck we're also recording and uh, we kind of bro- it all kind of just came together like it was all like natural it was like hey we all peoples we all from the same area we put it together and like on some Voltron and shit. So it kind of came together natural, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dead Eye. And then later on down the line, you know, Rex was always family. And then that just happened like, you know, one one of the best rappers on earth mm. wants to join, like, you know, officially join the team. Like he was always team, but when you want to, when he want to make it official, you don't say no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we added that, but I feel like everything came together and, you know, a big part of it, you know, kind of like staying together and, and, and you see in SC the squad content is DJ Dada. He's a real big, like he plays kind of like the RZA, the RZA position, you know? Okay. All right. So he, 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 yeah, he keeps it together for sure. He, he plays a big part in that. You know what I mean? Salute to my brother, DJ Dada, um, always and forever. What up, fam, if you're tuned in? Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just now tuning in, like I said, we got my man Easy Money in the building, someone I've been wanting to interview for the longest time, and I'm glad this moment is here. Uh, let's let's just uh, step away from music for a moment and talk about the Good Dad Gang. How did how did that come about, and why is that important to a brother like you and other hip hop fathers that well, really don't get the credit that they deserve for being in a tough industry where you have to speak on things that are very tough that kids really should not be listening to, but at the same time you're using this means to provide for your family. Why is that important to you? Well, first of all, Good Dad Gang is Terms thing. That's like Terms thing. He's that that's his trademarked and all that. Okay. Well, you know, a lot of a lot of people. Well, I rep it so hard, you know. So now, na- and you know, term is my man. So naturally, people assume like I have like a, a position there. Mm-hmm. I don't. That, that's terms thing. But you know, like I say, that's my brother. I support it all the way. And naturally, you know, I take care of my children. So that's that's kind of like naturally, you know. And then and then you know, the whole good dad gang star was actually my idea. Okay. Awesome. That was my. You know, I, I put the bug in. I put the bug in the air for that, and they did that. So you know, I, I support it. You know, hundred thousand percent, and I'm a. I'm a big part of it as far as, you know, just, you know, uh, encouraging, par- you know, brothers to be in their kids' lives and all that. Right on. But right. that is Term's thing, though. Okay. Well, salute to Term. I didn't want to uh, step on any toes. I really thought that was something. No, no, no. Not, no, bro, you're, not, you're definitely not the first. You won't be the last. Like, naturally, people just assume, you know, because we rep it so hard. Like, I'm always there. Whatever he's doing with it, I support it, just like anything else he does. You know what I mean? Right on, right on, right on. Okay. So... You are someone that works extremely hard. I mean, I was just going through your your catalog um, a couple weeks back, and I was just like, man, this dude drops album Like, you dropped, like, maybe five or six albums in the same calendar year in 2019. No, 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 that's not true. That's not true. Okay, so I got that off of Bandcamp. I got it off of Bandcamp. It said when it came out at the bottom, so that's where I got my. That's where I got it. Maybe they, maybe they put it up. Maybe they. Uh, I don't even do that's. I don't even. I didn't even do that. That might be dead eye, but okay. That's probably when when they went up. But um, this like if if when you take like I dropped a half EP just in December. Okay. So you take the half EP, right? You fast forward to March. You got Beyond Easy the LP. Yeah. Then you fast forward to June. You got the 2090 EP. And then uh, just last month was uh, the Guapi Chulo R&B EP. Yeah. And then this month, I'm, I'm actually dropping an album this month. Yeah, shout I saw out, I saw the video. Man, I was like, yeah, shout out to my man, Melks. That album is ready to rock. We about to master it this week. Bye, hopefully, have it out, hopefully have it out you know, late this month. And then before the year closes out, I have another one in December. What? <laughs> yeah. So that you can call that That's six, you know, from December to December, we'll do six projects. Now, the reason for that was this. I, I, I'll tell you something. Okay. With the whole COVID shit, you know, um, you know there was a lot of layoffs and all that. Yeah. So there was a lot of time, you know, in, in uh, if you go back to February of 2020, I mm-hmm. dropped the EP with Billy Loman called When I Feel Like. Yes. And the whole thing behind it was like, I do this shit when I feel like it. Mm-hmm. Cause then, you know, you know, I, I've, I've, I've far, I'm far past pursuing a rap career. Like I said to you, I just appreciate contributing to hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, you know, trying to get a deal and all that shit, I'm way past that. 
Um, but I never stopped doing it because I love it and I'm great at it, you know, in my opinion. So yeah. So I kind of fed off that energy, the whole like when I feel like thing. And I see how these cats are all putting out albums like like Mad Men, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to take this year and I'm going to just show motherfuckers like I can do what y'all do <laughs> better. Because, you know, with, with quantity, doesn't always come quality. Right. Everything I dropped is quality. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. I don't care about numbers. I don't care about popularity, whatever. You go through my catalog. You know, my link tree is in my bio. You can go in my bio. Everything's there. Everything's quality. You're not going to hear nothing. And also, you know, if you appreciate the sound that we bring. Yeah. That's important as well. Because if you're into the newer shit, you're not going to like it. And that's okay. That's okay. I'm not, I'm not mad at that. Mm -hmm. But if you appreciate quality, boom, bap, traditional East Coast hip hop, I'm right up your alley. And it's like, you know, with this next one I dropped with Melch, and then the, the last one in December, like, I don't even want to let the cat out the bag yet. But it's like, you know. Don't. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's don't heavy. do it. Don't, don't do it's it. Heavy. It's heavy. Don't do you it. Know? And it's like, people don't understand that to, to put out that much work and to do it at a consistent level, well, you rapping at a high level. You're not you're not slouching on the, on your bars. Yeah, that's that's not an easy thing for people to do. No, you know what I'm saying. So, nah, it's not. Just, it's, it's just my. It's just like I said, me feeding off the energy of that that EP title when I feel like right, I'm gonna turn this shit up this year. Next year I'll slow it down, but I still got a couple of things in the works. You know that'll be for next year too. But I'll, I'll tone it down. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, go ahead. What was you gonna say? Well, real quick, I'm I'm not a huge fan of all those albums in a short period of time. I'm not a huge fan of that. Really? Why? Why is that? Why is because that? Because I, I feel like I feel like people are dropping music that people are not anticipating. Mm -hmm. You just throwing the shit out, you know, for whatever. And you know, I get it. Like I I understand independence and all that. And you know, for the people whose lives depend on rap, you know, um, mine doesn't. You know, and I, I'm I'm blessed. I'm just blessed enough to be able to to do it when I want, how I want put it out when I want, how right. I want. That's a blessing, bro. Like, a lot of people are not capable of that, and I don't take that for granted. Like, a lot of dudes can't, they can rap better than a lot of people. They can't afford to, you know, get in the studio for two hours. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like, you know, or, or you know, they got a little they got a little uh, setup, you know, in their crib, mm -hmm. but they can't mix and master, you know? I don't I don't take that for granted. So, you know, I, I, I'm I'm banging it out. I'm banging them out right now, but I'm not, I'm not the hugest fan of that. Let me. Um, you you wear a lot of hats in in in, in the in the hip hop game. You uh, write, you you sing. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna talk about things because it's something. Peace to my man, peace to my man VS, Freddie Lowe here. What's up, man? All right, we're like we're gonna talk about the singing because there's um we're gonna get into that. But do you find it easier being the artist that writes and records or being the executive producer? Because I know you've done that. Or did you accept either challenge and say, you know what, this is just, I can just add this on to my legacy as being not only just a writer, but an executive producer. Talk about that real quick. Um, I mean, executive producer, I mean, I haven't really done much of that, if we're being honest. I mean, I executive produce everything I do. Right. You know, and you know, put it, when, when you're putting a project together, that that is, you are executive producing if you're doing it on your own, you know what I mean? Technically, you are. Fair to say. Exactly. Um, so, it, it, and it's like, you know, like, like okay, if if you really wanna if you really wanna go there to Beyond Easy album, yep. Like I told Faye, just you know, hop in the hop in the passenger seat. I got this. Follow my lead. Nice. So that was very a very uh, executive producer type type vibe. Um, but it's just like you know, I I, I like I just like being creative, bro. Yeah. I, I love to be creative. I love to be you know productive. I love I love you know. Uh, showcasing my talents to the world and that, that was a big reason I decided to do the R and B joint because it's like, you know, God gives you a gift and you just leave it there and let it collect dust. I feel like that's you're doing him a disservice doing that. Mm -hmm. There was more to that as well, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into. But yeah. you know, it's just I, I enjoy I really enjoy being creative, you know, being being creative and expressing myself through music. And you know, I feel like everyone should have an outlet where they express themselves somehow, some way, whether it's music, something else. Exactly. You know, because yeah. we, we all we all have something. We all have a, a talent. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us are not even aware of it. So if you find it, embrace it, utilize it and do that shit. Amen. 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 All right. Now, getting to the singing aspect of it. Um, 1982. Uh, shout to Satin Term. Um, amazing combination. Always and forever. And I know them first. Oh, yeah. so cool. I can oh, yeah. that. But there was a record that came out on a second album called Too Long. Yeah. And... 
at first when I first heard it, I'm like, yo, the beat is dope, the lyrics are dope, but I gotta find out who this singing person is. This person is talented. And then I found out it was you and I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, had I'm no idea that I was like, first of all, and it, it it was a dope, dope chorus, the way you 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 brought it fit in with the whole entire record, but everything. I'm like, when did singing like when did you introduce singing into your repertoire? Uh, of you just being the dynamic artist that you are, and when did you decide to do this R&B album? Because I, I was blown away. I'm gonna say an R&B album. What this man who bodies people? He's gonna. What was the focus and the motive to do an R&B album, and why now? So the 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 reason now is because that that's simple. I know how to sing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not I'm not somebody who understands music like theory. You know, like I don't know the keys. I don't know the notes. I don't give a fuck, honestly. I just sing, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I've always been capable, but I always felt like if you're going to do something, do it right. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't going to put I'm, I wasn't going to put together an R&B project that was poorly arranged or written. I I just have too much pride in my craft for that, you know what I'm saying? Um So I always said you could sound like Luther, you could sound like Whitney. If you don't have writing and if you're writing and you're arranging and isn't on point, you have nothing. Mhm. Mm so shout out my man Sean Caliber over at Showfire Studios. You know, um, he does very well with that. So him and I wrote and arranged everything on on the Guapi Chulo EP. So big, uh, pretty much the main reason that that happened was because of him. Because you know, like we we did write the songs together. Like I wrote a lot, a lot of the lyrics, and so did he. Mm -hmm. But the arrangement, where to put the harmonies and all that, that was pretty much all him. You know, and, and you know, not only that, as as we recorded the project with time, I kind of caught some of it, and then you know, I kind of like had a hand in it as well. Okay. But that that's pretty much what happened. I just did it. I didn't want to put something out that was like weak. You know, I wanted that shit sound like I I didn't want to sound like a rapper singing. I just wanted to sound like a singer. Right. Like if you uh, just heard that for if you heard that for the first time, if you I heard did. that if you heard me on that for the first time, you wouldn't think I was a rapper. You would just no. think I was a singer. No. Cause the shit is fly. And that was that was the whole idea. That was the that was the, the the target. I I often go on record saying that if an artist can't chat, the artist the art the main job of any artist is to challenge the listener. Um, and that's what I think certain artists do with each album that comes out. Like Nas recently with KD two. I'm like, I'm like, yeah. wow. And Hit Boy, I I know him as a trap producer. But what he's done with Nas is like, man, you brought back the sound of Pete Rock from '92, and it was just like. Baffled the yep. way, uh, but with you, I I always look forward to hearing whatever project you're gonna you're gonna drop because I know it'll challenge me, especially as a former MC. Like I can't tell you how many times I've been in my notepad after hearing something that you or Rex or Term or or someone that I've admired for years drop. Man, it makes me want to jump back in the ring. I'm so sick of you guys. Make me want to jump back in the ring. <laughs> it's, it, it's hard. It's hard. It's and it's you know it's hard to be constantly inspired and it's good you say that because you know when i see rex uh, work and i see everything term does or static yeah that shit makes that shit is inspiring to me that shit makes me go you know right and it's like uh like i lost that for a long time you know what i'm saying i lost that for a very for a good a good portion of time and when it came back i said i got it i'm gonna run with it right. so that's why you hear so much so much for me right now because i'm just i'm just rocking with it I, when you see your peoples you know it's yeah. dope. Like, you know, like I said earlier, you're one or two people. You see it and you don't and you hate it because mm -hmm. you're miserable or you're inspired and you and you support it and you encourage it. And it, and it, um, it, it rubs off on you. So I'm definitely the latter. It inspires me uh, because I've known you from your beginnings. Like we've known each other for so long yeah. to see where you started from. And you just kept the hustle going and going. You never, you never strayed away from it. Even when you said you, there was a time when you wasn't feeling it. I didn't know that. You just kept coming with projects, and I'm like, man, this is a legacy that's going to be remembered forever. When, when, when it's time for him to hang up the mic and say, I've, I can look back and say I've done a great deal of a great deal of positive contribution to the game. So I got to just push and keep pushing. Um, let me just go back a little bit. Uh, let's talk about the new project first, and then we're going to go back. So, Poppy Chulo is out right now. Guapi Chulo. Guapi Chulo. Guapi Chulo, man. Why, do I, why is Poppy Chulo always in my... Because Poppy Chulo is the... Poppy Chulo is the... Is the, 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 right. the cliche, you know? <laughs> I, I had to put my spin on it, you know what I mean? Guapi Chulo is in storage right now. Um, make sure you go and get that. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Who... 
Where do you will you first of all will you do another R and B album after this, or is this just a one a one time one and done type thing? I, I'm not opposed to it. Okay. I'm not opposed to it at all. It's just it's just about it. Just depends on where my inspiration takes me. You know what I'm saying? And right. it's funny. I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised the Guapi Chulo came about because none of those songs are about any anybody. Everyone's like, "Yo, who are these songs about?" I'm like, "Me and Sean just went in the studio and we just created." You just did it. Like not, none of those songs were like, "Oh, well, I went through this with this chick, or I went through this with that chick." Like none of that shit is about that. Mm -hmm. So it was funny how that came about because I usually don't. It's not always easy to do that, but you know, like I said, with Sean being the talented person he is, it kind of um, kind of brought it together. Rich exactly. Future Peace. We rock peace. I see ya. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, like I said, wherever my inspiration takes me, I I'll go with it. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. If you're just now tuning in, everyone, we got my man Easy Money here. Guapi Chulo is in stores right now. Well, not in stores. I'm so used to saying in stores. Online. Good. They, they know what you mean. All the your link speed. is in my bio, man. The link is in my bio for everything. But do remember, I did put out three other projects. Yes. In this past year. So check it all out, man. Soak it all in. Let's talk. Um, so you're now in a long line of, of rappers who actually sing. Queen Latifah, Fonte from Little Brother. Um, I can name a whole host of others, man. That that seems to be great company. Um, did you ever... Did, hmm, I'm trying to think. Is there anyone that you haven't worked with yet that you would like to? Because you're, you're, the people you work with is just amazing. I mean, there's a, there's a gang. I mean, there's, a, there's a long list. Alchemist. You've know? worked with so many people. Who haven't you worked with yet that you would still like? I haven't, work, I haven't worked with Alchemist. You haven't worked? Oh, you did, I thought you did beats with Alchemist. Why? Google is fuck, fucking your credibility up. I haven't I haven't uh, worked with Alchemist, but Alchemist definitely one I love to work with. There's a there's a long list, bro. There really is. You know what I'm saying? Um a, a lot of talented, you know, MCs and producers who I would who I who I wouldn't mind working with. Mm -hmm. But there's 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 also a flip to that. Um this this age, and this is one of the things that really turned me off from from the whole music game in general, mm -hmm. is that like I'm not chasing anybody for features i'm not chasing anybody to collaborate because it's always yeah 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 in your face and then when it's when it's time you i got this beat they start ghosting you they ignore you there's a lot of that you know or when you do do the record the shit drop and they don't even support it so i'd rather just i'd rather just make music with my peoples you know i mean there's a like there's a gang of people that i think are talented that are, are dead nice that i would work with mm -hmm. if it came up but I'm not really chasing anybody for that. Like I don't really care for that. Like you know, I'm with, I'm with, I'm with, I'm on my st shit, man. That's enough for me. You know what I mean? Az three said you dope by yourself. <laughs> and Please, I, I appreciate I, I that, brother. That. I, pre I appreciate that. I definitely. You know what I'm saying? Agree with so that. I mean, like I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not opposed to collaborating. You mm -hmm. know, but I am, um, I am, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not chasing it. Yeah, you're, you're Chris. You're, I got you're, these, you're, I got these on deck. Hit the, hit the DM. I got these on deck. You just put your name on. You just, whatever you come out with, you stand behind, regardless of who's behind the boards or who's not. You're just going to come out with the best product you possibly can. And I, re I respect that because you care about what you do. However. Absolutely. I take, I take a great deal of pride in my craft, brother. And I think everybody should. You know what I mean? Shout out to my man, Machete. He's in here. SC the Squad. What's up, bro? What's up, fam? But I, I got I, I to gotta bring this up because every hip-hop artist has a laundry list of people they want to work with. And personally, for me, you don't have a complete hip-hop album unless you have Premiere. That's just my personal opinion. I think every dope artist needs to have a Premiere track, and you was able to not only get a Premiere track, but the video had him. Like, to know that you're doing a video and the man that you've grew up listening to is standing right next to you as you're filming the video for nothing to like that moment, man, what was running through your head? He's like, yo, I, I'm standing next to DJ premier right now. Mm -hmm. This is like a dream that I've been waiting forever. And you're in that moment. What was running through your head at I'm, that time? I'm going to keep it completely real with you. Right. Yep. Well, first of all, shout, shout the term ecstatic for, you know, they, they, it was a, you know, it was them that obviously made that happen. But yeah, by the time we shot the video, I was kind of past that. It was when we were recording in headquarters, in the same booth that Jay-Z, Biggie, Nas, Big L, Fat Joe, everybody recorded in. That's when I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that's, that's, that was the shit that, and you know, like, yo, I'm, gener I'm generally a very, a very one take, you know? 
record. Yeah. I'm real, I'm real good with that. And you know, there was there was that, and I and and I'm sure I certainly have no problem being confident either. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna keep it real with you, like you know, that was that was humbling because you know, yeah, I definitely felt that shit when I got in there. Like when I got in the booth and I started looking around and I seen the fucking MPC sixty on the, on the couch next to me, and that and and on top of that, that that place doesn't even exist anymore. So I yeah. was blessed to be able to even record there. That's yeah. history right there. I, you could never take that from me. So you know. Um, that was really, and then, you know, we went back there to shoot uh, the part with Premiere, the video. So, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man, you know, uh, coming up and, and, and always like, you know, uh, idolizing and, and looking up to DJ Premiere for years. And, you know, like I said earlier, like, just know when you were never going to work with him. You just knew you were never going to work with him. And then this shit happens, exactly. you know, and then, and then like, you know, not only that, he becomes like, he becomes like the homie, you know? Right. He's such That's a, he's tough. such a. He's such an honorable goat. Yeah. Just a great person. Like, he shows love. Like, he's not, he's never on his high horse. And that's what, you know, to go back to what I was saying about the rappers that be feeling themselves that that I don't care for collaborating with. Like, Premier, that you haven't, you haven't accomplished one twentieth of what this man has. Right. Yet, yet you're not one twentieth as humble as this man is. Right. You feel what I'm that, saying? And that, that shit is crazy. That that's just crazy. Big up to Stack Selector who just joined in. What up, Static? Okay, what up, Static? We were just talking about Static, man. You know, so yeah, big shout out to Static. You know, I gotta say it again because he kind of he really orchestrated all that. You know, what I mean, he he really really made that happen. So exactly. that shit is just you know that that shit is just dream come true shit. That's bucket list shit, and that's something that you know if I would have did that one album and I would have just stopped for good, I would have been alright with that because you know to get Premier, Ninth Wonder, Buck Wild. <laughs> And obviously, Static Static did the, the majority of the album to do that. That's Static is a legend in the making. When you look back at that in ten years, that shit is huge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Kid, I'm just a kid from Haver, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let me. Uh, for those that don't know, the album he's talking about is the motive of nearly everybody, yo. So if you did not get that album, please Money. definitely listen Sir. to that album. For slept real, slept on, slept on, fire Big shit. Time slept on. Big time slept on. Um. Throughout your career, you know, throughout your your time doing this, you've traveled the globe. You've been to many places. You've performed. Um, what nah, the? I haven't. I, I, I haven't though. See, this is not nah, haven't. I haven't done that. No, I you've been there. No, no, no. Oh, well, let me say. Let, let me. me with my let people, me, let me. I gotta make this clear though. I gotta make this clear. When my people were traveling the world, I was in jail, bro. Oh, I am. Okay. I am living proof that hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm wow. living, and, I, and 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 I feel the need to say that because. You know, I used to, I was in the joint getting pictures from Terman Dead Eye, they're in Greece, they're in Amsterdam, they're everywhere. And, you know, I got, I got left and it was my own fault. You know what I'm saying? I was trying not to go there. I did not want to talk about that. No, I we don't, we don't gotta, we don't gotta okay. dwell on it, but it, that's, that shit happened right. and that's a real thing. And I, that, that's something that I feel like people need to understand because, right. you know, um, you could be, you can rap like fucking Rock Kim and Big Daddy Kane and Cool G rap in a blender. Like if you're not working, it's, it does you no good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're not out there, if you're bullshitting, you can't have one foot in and one foot out. You got to you gotta get them both in. You really got to grind it out. So any if there's, if any aspiring artist gets to see this, just, you know, hold on to that. You know what I mean? Well, since you are dropping jewels right now, even stuff that I didn't even know, I, I want to ask you this. Like, what's the best advice you've ever gotten from somebody that you can recall right now? Uh, I, I, I got one. Okay. So something that has always stuck with me, shout out to Buck Wild, the hip hop legend, my big brother. Um, another super humble guy who's always showed me nothing but love and and it's always been love with Buck Wild. You know, I appreciate him a lot, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But uh one time he did a he did like a beat showcase and I drove him to his hotel room and we just chopping it up, whatever, whatever. And you know how we to go back to the whole executive producer thing, when you're yep. creating by yourself. You know, we were kind of having a, a conversation about that. And he goes, yo, e, it takes a team. Like, Dr. Dre didn't do the chronic alone. No, he and didn't. And that right there was so simple, yet very profound. And it's always stuck with me. It's mm. always stuck with me. So, like, I always take, you know, uh, feedback. Let my, you know, when I got something going on, let my peoples hear it. Always play it in front of my peoples. And I always want to hear what they got going on. Because you really, you really can't do, it really takes a team. Mm -hmm. It really takes a village, like they say, you know what I mean? So that's really, that was really something that was like so simple, yet stuck with me. Crazy. So shout out to Buckwild for that, though. I'll never forget that shit. Big up to Buckwild all day, every day. Um, 
as we wind down, because I know you got to get ready to go. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Um, what is the what is the Easy Money legacy? What what when it's all said and done? What do you want people to remember most about you? What I want people to remember most about me was, you know, I did I did everything uh, my way. I stuck to my guns. Didn't lose me, did you? Oh man! All right, there he is. All right, there he is. Cool. We back. We back. Um, you want me to say that again? Like I said, easy. Well, go ahead, sir. What? Did you want me to say that again? Uh, that again? Yeah, you you can if you want. Yeah. So for those that tune in, in easy money. See, I just asked him um, when it's all said and done, and he walks away from it. What would be his legacy? And he's gonna um, answer that again for those that just joined in. Go ahead, sir. I just my, my my whole thing is like yo, Easy did it his way. Easy stuck to his guns. Um, it might have it might have it might have held me back some, mm -hmm. but I have no regrets. You know what I mean? And I was able to contribute to this culture that I love and that I, that that helped raise me. And I'm good with that, bro. To be honest, real rap, and that's that's basically what it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Easy Money, and. I'm going to say this while he's here. I'm not dick riding. I'm not doing this just to earn favor. Cause nah, I, you, you ain't even got to say that, bro. You ain't even got to say all that, bro. You know what's love. He, he is perhaps one of my favorite, and I hate using the word indie, so I'm not going to say that, but he's just one of my favorite artists to listen to, not only because I know him, but because he really takes the time to put in the work. Um, he really cares about what he's saying, what he puts out, regardless of who's behind the boards. This is one of the artists that doesn't compromise the culture. And I think that is a dope thing, especially in this time frame when a lot of East Coast cats are trying to sound like they from down South and doing the trap mm -hmm. stuff and, and, and things yeah. like that. You stayed with the same thing that you've been doing your whole career. And I think that's like, I don't have to, there's certain people I don't have yeah. to doubt when I know that they're coming out with something. I'm like, oh, that's my man. Yo, I mean, listen, first of here. all, first of all, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. But yeah. remember, 20 years, SC the Squad been doing this shit. 20 years. Yeah. We stuck with the boom bap. Yep. These other cats that came in with the boom bap, they did the trap. They did the Rick Ross flow. They did the Ace Hood and all that. Now that now that, now that the boom bap is coming back, they want to come back. Stay right. over there, baby. We got this shit. We got this shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all good. Indeed. Yo, thank you, brother. Um, I, appreciate, I appreciate you having me. And, you know, I just want to say I appreciate, you know, your friendship and you supporting my shit. And it's love, bro. It's, it's an honor to be here with you. You know what I'm saying? Thank you very much, brother. So, Papi Chulo is out right now, people. I strongly suggest you go get that, not only because the brother put his time and effort and his heart into it. It's just another side of easy money that I think people really will be surprised about because the brother can sing. I was listening to the records, and I was just like, man, this brother can really put up, put got harmonies I'm like, yeah, I appreciate you, brother. I can play this in front of my woman, and we can just two step and and appreciate bop our you, heads bro. at the same time. And it's just like it's just a wonderful testament to who you are. But let me also disclaimer this, people: the bars are still coming. This man has got projects like yeah. in store that he doesn't. The, the bars, the, the pen doesn't stop. And indeed, indeed, easy money is is got got stuff. Whew, got stuff in the chamber ready to come out and play. And you all need to really, really be prepared. One other thing I want to get into before I send you on your way, um, the 2090 albums. Um, first of all, another great project, another great Thank album. You, Just the building building on your, your legacy as who you are. But when I first saw it, I was like, man, where did I see this before? And I had to actually look it up to remember where it came from. And you, you pay homage to Grand Poopa. Uh, yes, sir. On that album, man. Yes, For those that don't know who Grand Poopa is, ladies and gentlemen, listen. Um, you usually can tell the front man of a crew and Brand Nubian. I love Brand Nubian, but I just knew when I first saw Grand Poopa, I'm like, this dude's going to be a solo success, and he was. What 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 was the inspiration? What was the motive and the inspiration to drop that album and pay homage to Grand Poopa? 
Um, so shout out to my man Nozies. He's a producer from out in Virginia who did, who produced the entire EP. Um, when when he when he sent me beats, them shit sounded like really '90s. Mm -hmm. and, and when I, I when I say that, like everything we do, they compare it to '90s. But his shit literally sounded like digging in the crates, Lord Finesse type beats, Buck Wild. You know what I mean, Diamond yeah. D type shit. So I'm like, damn. So you know, you never take it back. You always move forward. Right. So that's why we call it 2090. You feel me? Yeah. And and one day I was just listening to um, I was listening to uh 2000, the yeah. the Grand Poop album. Grand Poop was a god to me. He's yeah. you know hip hop legend. And I'm looking at the artwork and I'm like looking at the 2000. I'm like I can make that zero or nine. Mm hmm And you know, but the big thing was where you know it was very 90s inspired i felt it was dope but it was even doper because it was pool and he doesn't get his just due no he does if it would have been like a nas or a jay-z album i wouldn't have done it you know what i mean we we beat them to death and rightfully so like they, they're the guards and they, you know they, rightfully so but pool doesn't doesn't get his just due and when i did it when i dropped it i was like all right is everyone gonna knock me for, for doing it or are they gonna love it and it was definitely more love than anything so i was i was glad i did that shit yeah, I was I, I was glad you did it too. And you're right. There's a lot of MCs that have put in years of work, like Nas and Jay Z, that I feel still don't get the flowers that they richly and rightfully deserve. Yeah. So Pooba is definitely on that list, and I could probably name 15 more that I yeah. to be on that particular list. Yeah. But um, that's the Pooba though. Pooba, Pooba's I, I always fuck with Pooba, man. Always. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my man Easy Money representing Haverhill, Massachusetts, representing Show Off, ST, ST. Dot. I mean, there's so many names um, that this man <laughs> worked with. There's so many names that he's he's done records with. But this is just the beginning. And I honestly, I'm not just saying that. I know it sounds cliche, but I really think this is the beginning for for you because I take it back to that moment when Chuck gave you your flowers at the Middle East and said, "These two right here are going to be your next to blow." And here we are, 20 years later. And you proved checkmark and a whole lot of other people right. Um, and I'm very glad that you all stuck it out. You gave me something to listen to. You gave me something to DJ. Uh, but you gave me something to stand behind because, again, it's cool when it's just artists you respect over the years. But it's also cool when you know the artist personally. Yes, sir. Um, and you know, I, and I, appreciate, I appreciate your support. And I appreciate your passion and love for hip-hop. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Cause I, I'm, so, I'm on the same boat. Shout out, shout out my cousin Knight. What's up? All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, I got to let this man go because he, he has other things he has to do uh, and keep everything flowing. But I want to thank you for taking the time to to, to pod me, bro. I appreciate you, bro. podcast. And um, the floor is yours. Promote promote your shit. Go. Shout out Manipulator. He just jumped in. We got some work. But, you know, as far as that, just, you know, follow me here on the gram if you don't already. Click the link in my bio. All my work is there. We got there's a lot of good work in there. It's very quality. Um, a lot of, you know, heavyweights and, and, and uh, uh, you know, as far as names and a lot of heavyweights as far as talent. So, you know, everything's quality, man. Check it out, please. Absolutely. All right, man. So I'm going to let this man go. You have a blessed day, my brother. Enjoy your weekend. And um, I know football season is, is here. We got we to gotta chop it up because, you know, I'm originally in the New England area now here in Kansas City. Um, how do you feel about Cam Newton? Um being well, I don't even want to say replaced by Mac Jones, but that's is what happens. How do you feel about the quarterback move for New England? I did. I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Bro, it's like if if I didn't cry when Paul Pierce left Boston, I'm not crying for none of this shit. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like if I if I can if I can take Pierce leaving Boston or even Brady leaving yes. New England, it's just the biz, man. Who cares, right. bro? Right. You know what I'm saying. Do, you do what that. you do for the for, for what you feel is the betterment of the team. And if it works, you a genius. If it doesn't work, you an idiot. And that's just how it goes. And the shit keeps going and going and going. Real rap. That's probably the realest answer I think I've heard yet. Because everyone's like, oh, Cam, you know, I miss. I'm like, man, they had to do what was right, man. He, he, hey, he's, he's still rich. Don't feel bad for him. Yeah, he, he really is. He really you know what is. Saying? All right, my brother. Yo, I, wanna, um, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you a lot, bro. You already know. Yes, sir, man. We'll chop it up. Once again, everyone, Easy Money right here. Guapi Chulo is in stores, online, streaming. Don't download it. Purchase the shit. All right? Real love, yo. Rap sheet is gone. Everyone enjoy your weekend. Easy Money, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. Salute.
Appreciate you, right, bro. Man. Yes, sir.